screen right here. Hey, I see you seeing me, seeing you. What's really good? Welcome back to the Kickback, episode 20. We ain't teenagers no more. We ain't doing this shit for play. We don't do this for fun. We grown men now. And Game thing. grown women. Because yes. it's all equal opportunities around here. Yes. Yes. Grown minority women, too. Oh, hey. my God. Yes. Wow. Yes. They pick the great people. Yeah. High five. Don't leave my hand. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Yes. If you are new to the Kickback, thank you for joining us for the first time. If this is not your first time joining us, welcome back. We appreciate you. Uh, I am your host. I go by the name of Jesus Christ. And I'm in a, a different seat <laughs> than usual tonight. I'm in uh, one of these captain chairs, which I'm not, I'm not even mad at. I kind of feel like I can see everybody here on our panel. I can really get in depth. I, I miss can, those chairs. I can look into <laughs> Dano's eyes. Normally, I just feel him breathing on the back of my neck. <laughs> so this is nice. To my left, and not my far left, just my immediate left, we got music video director extraordinaire. Always swagging. He pulled out the calls for us for tonight. I don't know if you uh, if you recognize that, but uh, he's really doing it big over here. Please welcome Mr. John Colombo. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Ooh. Hey, so so Thank you. I don't applaud myself. You got to start it <laughs> off. Golf nobody clap. else do it. Exactly. <laughs> and on my far right, which is usually to my immediate right, we normally kind of like we, we click pinkies. You know, we lock up sometimes. It's a thing. It's a thing. <laughs> He, uh, he brought his friends out, his white knees tonight. <laughs> they are uh, live and direct. <laughs> if you're only like listening to this. In the flesh. <laughs> in, in the, the flesh. flesh. <laughs> if you're only listening to this, you should definitely check out the visual component because he is, he is very flashy show your knee off. in a different way. He's Loud and proud. <laughs> <laughs> Loud <laughs> and <laughs> proud. Yeah. Not only joining us with his knees, he also pulled out some spizikes. He's in the, the holiday spirit. Already. Already. He's ready to go. Happy holidays. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he is the editor in chief over here at uh, Sneaker Inc. Please give a warm welcome to Mr. Dan O'Holcomb. Thank you. And we're doing something a little different over here tonight. It's not different in a way that you would expect, but it's different in something that's new to us. And it's actually something that we have been trying to do for a while now. And we have finally found the lady, the people, the ladies that will write for this. So I'm gonna introduce you to our guest and she's gonna introduce you to her guest mm. because we have two <laughs> firsts tonight. Oh. For the first time we have a lady on our panel and we also have a guest of our guest. My plus one got a plus one, so don't make a fuss, son. <laughs> uh, our guest for this evening is a true embodiment of the term the force is female. Mm. Born in Los Angeles, she spent her younger years in the States before moving to Taiwan at the age of nine, but made her way to LA during her high school years. Interning at Popular Demand while simultaneously working as a party planner, she quickly moved her way up the ranks to become the marketing director for the brand. Using her wealth of knowledge and her place as a cultural director in the fashion ethos, she recently created iLust Eyewear, whose mission is to make it possible for every girl to be able to buy fashion forward, designer quality sunglasses at an affordable price. With a nickname like Thundercup and a strong detest for velvet, please welcome <laughs> the first lady of the kickback, Ms. Monica Lynn. Woo! 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 Play it on the website. Hey, you feel me? You know what? I'm always trying to secure the bag, so anytime <laughs> we can, like, we can work out some, some right extra, here. you know, some extra work for your boy. I'm always in there. Is that where you're like top pointing to me now? Just yeah. yeah. And I would like for you to introduce to our listeners and our viewers who you brought along with you as well. So I brought along Kiana. Um, she is also, mm -hmm. you know, female, obviously. <laughs> um, she's been <laughs> holding it down in the industry for a while now, probably even longer, I think even longer than I have. Yeah, it's just um, about, yeah. And, you know, sh we met at Popular Demand, mm -hmm. and we've just become, like, pretty much best friends, and Dope. we launched I uh, iLust together, mm -hmm. and I thought it only made sense for her to come along, too. All right, Ooh. business partners in the house. Yeah. 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 Thanks for having yeah. me. It's a beautiful thing to see women empowering women, because I think a lot of times in, you know, the social media space, and just in society in general, it's very, uh, hey, one, hey, hey. it's, yeah, no, absolutely, <laughs> it's very male dominant, but then mm. it's also the women that are in positions of power almost seem to throw these little, like, 
jabs. Jabs at one another. Yeah. Even if it is like just a little subtweet or something like that, it, it seems to always show more of the negative than the positive. Mm -hmm. So for you know you two to be working so closely together and to see you guys kind of come together as one is a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us a little bit, tell us and our viewers and our listeners a little bit about yourself other than, you know, what was in that beautiful bio that I, <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I wrote up for you? Tell us, uh, you well know. Well, you pretty much told my whole life story. I well, mean, you I know, mean you I gave a little outline, but you can like, you can fill in the blanks a little bit. Um, well, we're both from LA and we both spent a good amount of our childhood in Pas the Pasadena area. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that is. Um, mm -hmm. It's where the Rose Bowl happened, the Rose Parade, and all that stuff. Oh, yeah, so it's a Project cool X little took place LA <laughs> suburb for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> fun fact. You want to tell me the fun fact? I was actually an extra in that I'm movie. Ah, yeah. Ah, yeah. Ah, yeah. 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 And it was filmed in uh, Burbank, like the Warner Brothers studio. Of course so it was. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But we don't want to give away the technical. Movie, okay, my bad. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was actually, it, it actually, it was, it was not a bad. No, but it was in Pasadena. But yeah. <laughs> She's like, actually, that party was not even real. Guys. It wasn't even real. <laughs> <laughs> it, it wasn't. <laughs> so, so yeah. Um, you know, we we grew up in Pasadena, and I spent a few years overseas too before that. And you know, I've always had a passion for streetwear and kind of like the sneaker culture and all that kind of stuff, um, which I think we can both really relate to. And just. Having, you know, being a woman in the industry has really put a unique lens on, you know, everything for us um, because there aren't that many women in the industry and, you know, there aren't that many women of color either. Um, so, you know, I think we've been asked quite a few times, like, oh, what is your perspective on that and this right. and that? So I'm pretty, you know, honored to be able to provide perspective in that Absolutely. sense. Absolutely. Yeah. When was your first like introduction to you know fashion and streetwear? Because I can imagine being a young kid leaving, you know, the states and going to Taiwan. Mm -hmm. That was very formative for you in those years to go see a whole different side of the world mm -hmm. to be introduced to a, a culture that is your own, but something right. that you weren't so used to. Yeah. When was the first time that you really felt like you you kind of understood what was going on? So I started getting into it actually because of my mom. And, you know, overseas, like in Taiwan and in Japan, streetwear has been around for a little bit longer than it has been around mm -hmm. in the U.S. So, um, you know, collabs and things like that with, you know, very small independent boutiques were a really big thing. And so my mom would keep up with these different independent brands um, in magazines. And, you know, a lot of celebrities in Asia really keep up with those types of trends. And they're always looking for something new and unique to wear. Um, so she would be like, oh, you know, so-and-so is wearing this brand. It's called Vape. And I'm like, oh, what's that? And so I would get, you know, yeah, I would look it up or, like, that. check it out. <laughs> yeah. So I definitely, you know, owe my mom that because she really got me into it. And she still pays a lot of attention to Actually, it. Actually, she's here tonight. Let's bring her up. Oh, bring her. You know, one time she's like, <laughs> should. But, yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, I can't that's imagine, dope. like, your mom being into something so dope. Yeah, yeah, no, like some parents yeah, are like not at all. <laughs> yeah, like some parents are like into like dope music and stuff, and right. they learn from them. Like, oh mm -hmm. yeah, like the mm -hmm. Beatles are sick. Like you should know about that. Right. Like, yeah. So like that, but for them to be into streetwear and like yeah. small, small other shit. Yeah, shit, yeah. yeah you really wouldn't normally neat. expect that from yeah. your elders to really be on yeah. what's going on. on I'm the I'm pretty fortunate. Um, a lot of people in my family are pretty like forward thinking and they're open minded right. about things like that. So it was really cool to kind of discover it. And then there are a lot of different districts in, um, like in Taiwan or in Japan, you know, obviously Tokyo is like a really big streetwear hub. And then in Taiwan, um, Taipei is the capital of Taiwan. And there's tons of little boutiques everywhere. And they're like always into skate culture or urban mm -hmm. culture. And they'll see what's happening in the US and kind of like take it and make it their own and kind of just magnify right. it. So, you know, the, the stereotypes and the kind of different things, like, you know, if they see Americans wearing gold chains, they'll make even bigger gold chains, like, you know, in Asia. So it's pretty dope That's to dope. see all that, yeah. And Kiana, when was the first time that you really kind of understood what was going on and really paid attention to your personal style? Um, I feel like probably when I was 
much younger, in like elementary school, maybe middle school. Um, I was such a tomboy growing up. I was into basketball. I looked up to Iverson. He was like my, fa my you know. Yeah. And I feel like him being a trendsetter at that time in like the NBA was. And not giving a fuck. Yeah, that was there. like <laughs> my inspiration. Yeah. So yeah. I feel like around that time is when I kind of picked up on myself. Mm -hmm. Intuition into this whole fashion streetwear world through him, kind of, so. Iverson. Yeah. That's, that's, a, that's a good answer. Yeah, I was about to say, that's, that's a, a good one to have. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's your introduction what to What was it, it Iverson? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a legend. Yeah. No, it's For straight sure. up. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about the eyewear brand that you both have started and kind of what your, you know, your vision is for that. No pun intended. So, oh, that was, that was a good one. So, um, you know, we've been working on Pop With A Man stuff, which is a men's, you know, clothing brand. Right for the past five years, and we always wanted to do something for women because we're obviously women. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, um, you know, being around boys all the time and working, making products for men all the time is kind of, not that you get tired of it, but you're like, oh, you know, we would love to do X, Y, and Z. Right. So, you know, we kind of, we went through, it was a process for sure because we went through phases of trying to figure out what type of product we would want to, you know, work on, put out there. Mm -hmm. And then eventually, you know, it, it was kind of broad at first, and then we narrowed it down to sunglasses, you know, because we both love sunglasses. And it's something specific enough, and we feel like there's a space in the sunglasses industry to kind of make a platform that speaks to, you know, young women and inspires young women to, you know, go out and pursue their dreams, even if it's unconventional, which I think is really important in Absolutely. 2017, sure, yeah. um, because you know you have the internet. If you want to learn something, you pretty much can, you know, it's be at your fingertips. Yeah. 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 So I really, you know, kids are always like, "Oh, how do you do this? How do you do that?" I'm like, just just Google I'm not it. Google. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I'm always tempted to, you guys know that site, let me Google that Let me Google it yeah. for you, yeah. I, I, oh, I've actually done it a couple times, but I don't want to be petty. So. <laughs> <laughs> I used to send people that shit all the time. I know. I, forgot I used, about to, that. I used to work at Apple, so everybody would hit me up with like random Apple questions about their right. phone and shit, so I would just let me Google that for you and right. send them the link. Yeah. Like, it's the all there. And they'd be like, how did you do that? I'm like, oh my <laughs> really? God. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I think, I think, I, she can probably agree to that when we started in the industry, there weren't a lot of resources for young women, like you yeah. know, what to look out for, what to think about, and mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Um, so we really want to be able to, it's not just about making sunglasses or selling sunglasses, we want to be able to create this community and a family and be a resource for other young people. Um, it doesn't even have to just be women, but right. just young people in general so that they have you know, some positive role models, and we know a lot of, you know, women and other young creatives who work in the industry, and we want to be able to put them on this platform and share them out. Very rarely am I, like, a little bit bummed out when one of my friends tells me that they have a dope brand. Mm -hmm. I'm always, like, sick, and now <laughs> I'm just like, oh, uh, because I don't get to have any of it. <laughs> and then I'm like, because you're like, yeah. when is it ever? It's like, it's just for women. Oh, this is the first brand yeah. you can't get free shit from. But that's basically what it is. No, no, that's, that's, that's not, why it's not about being free. Send him some, show. like, extra <laughs> large free. shirts. No, or but like you know what? Yeah. Yeah. I could probably rock some of that, though. I'm sure. He's definitely yeah. good. Yeah. Look, this, this beautiful body isn't built for men. <laughs> but eyewear is one of them. Yeah, you definitely could. You definitely could. Let me see those, bro. Let me see that. I bet you I can pull that off. Awesome real shit, though, sometimes, like, see. Let's see here. You got a little kid. Yeah, I yeah, got yeah. The yeah little it's an even tray. It's an even tray. Even tray. You know when you wear sunglasses for a long time? Those look good. Crush it. Yeah. Okay. I don't even have to look at them. Are we done with yeah, this? Yeah, How do I look? I've look never good. seen him wearing a kid look weird on him, let's be honest. Does look weird? No, no, no. I've never seen it. Super modern, like futuristic, clear glasses on, and I look like a drug dealer. Yeah, yeah, you, you look like yeah, yeah, you do. Not a dealer, like drug a, uh, a user. A drug user. A user. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh shit! Y'all didn't let me get my statement out. I was gonna say you look more like a, a lord. Yeah, like a drug lord. Like a drug lord. 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 Like yeah. not nah, for real. Like you're running the whole operation. You got minions under you, mm -hmm. just like moving oh, weight. I like that minion. That's what I'm saying. Like, She's about to get on a, a jet back to Cocobamba, Bolivia. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yo, a lot of times. Like narcos. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll look Cali at cartel. like stuff that's specifically for women. I don't know if that's saying something about me, but I'm like, yo, that shit is so fucking lit. And a lot of times, whether it be footwear or sunglasses or things like that, I think mm-hmm. women have this this certain eye and this this whole. It's, I think it's a lot of your intuition where you can kind of understand, you can see things into the future and understand how things are going to work a lot better. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a beautiful thing because I really do feel like there aren't enough positive role models for women at the moment. And we kind of talked about this briefly off air. I feel as though there's more negativity within the female community. Like, I don't know if most women think that there's not enough space for them or, you know, whatever it is. But I think we see a lot of, a lot of times more women going head to head instead of congratulating each other and working together right, and, and really empowering one another in this space. Mm-hmm. Right. I think that's a beautiful thing that you guys are really, you know, doing right yeah, now. Yeah, thanks. Absolutely. <laughs> you're not trying. You're doing. We're doing. doing. Yes. You're doing. We're doing. There's no Sorry. such thing as try. You're doing. <laughs> you're doing. Yeah, do it. You're not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking of being a woman in the space, what have been some of your experiences as a marketing director mm-hmm. in something so male dominated like streetwear? Do you feel like you almost have to prove yourself a little bit more? Yeah, I think um, so. We're We've been the only two girls that worked at Popular Demand for pretty much the past five years. Wow. And so, you know, a lot of times when people come in for meetings or, you know, things like that, um, sometimes sometimes people will come in and e- sometimes it might be, a e- it might even be a woman, they'll come in and they'll shake everybody's hand except for like my hand or like if we're the meeting together, our hand. Mm-hmm. And so then you kind of have to like over, you know, exert yourself and be like, hey, you know, my name is Monica, you right. know, shake your hand. It's 2017. And sometimes they, I mean, but you, I think you might be surprised to find out what the environment is like. Do they um, feel like you're an assistant or they're to take notes or something? Like, what's yeah, the Yeah, sometimes, okay. sometimes they, they might think that, like, and there's nothing wrong, if you're an assistant, that's cool too. Absolutely. If you're an intern, that's cool too. You know, we started as interns as right. well, but, um, you know, sometimes you just have to work harder and do, not do the most, but you kind of have to take extra steps to be like, hey, no, you should take me seriously. Right, just for a reason. Yeah, mm-hmm. a lot of times people find out our job titles and they, their whole demeanor changes, and I don't think it should be like that. Yeah, you so got to put a bird man in the meeting. <laughs> you tell to put some respect <laughs> on my name. Right, right, right. Even that magic in like Agenda, when we yes. go to the trade shows, people oh will be like, oh, God. are you guys the promo girls? Uh, and we're oh. like, oh, oh. especially no. in the yeah. yeah, like early on. Yeah. Well, we, and we kind of went through this phase too. We were trying to like, wear all these like streetwear outfits with heels and we we're like, oh, this is so cool. This right. is like more girly. And so people would be like, oh, like what, what brand are you guys like promoing for or modeling for? And we're like, first of all, I don't fucking model. <laughs> 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 Second of all, we are not, for, we have yeah. job titles. Yeah, yeah, it was just not, insane. Not that there's, okay, again, there's nothing wrong with being promo models. Of but I feel like with the amount of work that we do and the type of work that we do, it is kind of disrespectful to just say like, oh, aren't you? Oh, they're just promo models. And then they get a business card and they're like, oh. Right. Like you guys have a legit position. Yeah. And I feel like that's kind of sad, you know? And I I always try to, you know, I think a lot of people aren't ignorant on, you're not really ignorant on purpose. They just aren't aware. Right. So the more you make people aware, even if it's just one or two people, you know, it, it still helps. Change yeah, changes absolutely. I feel like the, the ignorance is just the lack of education on that certain yeah. topic or whatever it is. And mm-hmm. it, I, I can identify with that. Obviously, being a black male, I'm tall, I have tattoos, I'm, I can be seen as intimidating. Mm-hmm. So you almost have to go that extra mile to be like, hey, I'm here for a reason. This is right. what I'm doing. And it's unfortunate that you ladies fall into that category, but it is, it's very important that you're aware of it and you know how to kind of maneuver yeah. through yeah. those situations and, and understand this is... This is what it is. This is how I have to move forward, and, mm-hmm. and it's okay. Mm-hmm. What's up? A- another thing that people are always like make a comment about is they're like, "Oh, your handshake is so firm." I'm like, "Yeah, it's because of like, it's it's kind of, I don't know. It's just that's just how my handshake is." <laughs> but they act like it's <laughs> like they're so shook, right? <laughs> they're so shook, like, "Oh my god, right?" Like, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> right. And I, I I feel like I don't know if I'm like. It, that's just how literally how my handshake has always been, but I think sometimes people feel like, oh, she's like over asserting herself. Mm-hmm. Like that's why they make that comment, and it's just the reality of it is that a lot of women do have to do 
feedback. Absolutely. You know? mm-hmm. So because by default people aren't respecting what they do or they automatically are categorizing them. So That's a great way to say it's just business, buddy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Hey, yeah. right off the rip. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. But it takes ladies like yourself to be like on the ground level in, you know, in the light being like, hey, no, this we're here for a reason. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm not going to dumb myself down or just be this pretty girl to make you feel better about yourself. Mm-hmm. You have to come forward with that confidence and have a firm handshake and be like, yo, I'm here to do business. I'm here for a reason. Let's make this work. Like, yeah. Take gender out of it. Like we are here to conduct business. Right. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. And I think with some of the current events that have been going on, you know, it kind of just sheds more light onto being a woman in pretty much any industry. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times, you know, guys will try to, you know, say slick comments or, you know, they'll try to use work as an excuse to be like, hey, like, let's go, you know, let's go to dinner. But then they don't really want to go to dinner for business. They want right. to go to dinner for other reasons. Yeah. And, you know, in my experience, you know, I've had to be like, no, like, just so we're clear, this is not that kind of dinner. And, you know, sometimes guys get upset over it. And sure. I don't know if it is like that for you guys, like if women have done that to you guys. <laughs> never. Don't put me in that guy. Everyone's never thinking happened. like, <laughs> never like quietly, like, huh. I've done that a couple times. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to but think. <laughs> <laughs> right? Oh, man. But yeah, it's just, you know, I, if everyone is cool with it, that's cool too. But I feel like it puts a lot of young girls, especially the young ones, you know, the fresh out of college, they're 20, 21. It puts them in a really awkward position Absolutely. because they're like, do I have to say yes? Well, I was out on this mm-hmm. business opportunity. And I, I, you know, when girls ask me for advice, I'm like, listen, you don't want to do business with someone you're trying to work with. For real. Like, no. they don't, they're not really trying to do business with you. So they're trying to do some kind of if business. If you want to let them holler, <laughs> let them holler. Yeah, but, yeah. you know. And that's like a, a, a topic right now, too. The like Harvey Weinstein. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Topic a bit, but with the Harvey even. Weinstein thing, yeah, yeah. like it's there are men in positions of power that are abusing that power right. with these young women that feel like they have to kind of conform to these ways in order to make it. And I don't mm-hmm. think that that's like obviously there's bad apples in every bunch, but I don't feel like those are the ones that you need to be doing business with. And right. If you can kind of read your intuition and understand like that's not right, mm-hmm. it may take you a little bit longer to get where you need to be. But if you do it in a way that is, you know, staying true to your morals and your values, right. you're going to be a boss if that's, you know, yeah. where you right. want to be. Right. And yeah, and if you're consistent with it, you know, people will right. know like that's how you really are. Because yeah. they're, you know, sometimes people get upset and they start talking shit or whatever. Yeah, you know, get I've definitely mm-hmm. seen right. that happen too. <laughs> but that's what you, you right. hit it on the head with the abuse of power thing. Like right. I've dated many a industry or video girl or something or mm-hmm. whatever or someone that I met through work. Mm-hmm. But would you like to go on a date? You know what I'm saying? Like make it clear right. that this is what it has nothing to yeah. do with business right. or I'm right. gonna put you in something or right. about you know what I'm saying? That's the abuse of power shit, yeah. not on some like if you're interested in someone, you're interested in someone. And if that person is also, then they're great. Yeah, yeah. And personal on some and whole other on that sneaky, separate. let's go to dinner bullshit. Yeah. Like, yeah. Nah. Or yeah. like if you know, so there, girls obviously do things different in different ways, and some girls are like here strictly for business. Some girls are like, oh, I'm not sure. This is kind of fun. And there's nothing wrong with <laughs> e- there's nothing wrong with <laughs> anyone, right? <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're like, oh, they're we might like dabble in the industry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, oh, we we all know those girls. <laughs> That's fine too. If they're cool with it and they're consenting, it's totally fine. A- absolutely. But let's just, you know, not try to pressure every single girl into that. Yeah. Right. It's pretty. It's pretty like yeah, because that wouldn't be fair. It wouldn't be fair to do that. Just like it wouldn't be fair for you to categorize all men of power with being scumbags. Exactly. Right. Like it's the same. Exactly. You know, it's yeah. a give and take. Yeah. Sure. It, or if like, uh, you know, someone that's in uh, a higher up position is like, oh, you look nice today. It doesn't mean they're like <laughs> hating on you. Run like, run to HR. <laughs> right? <laughs> Type of an email sent to HR. Memo. But, So-and-so you know. said I look nice today. <laughs> right? <laughs> I did not feel safe. Yeah, like, you have to, you have to, don't be overly sensitive about it. You have to try to use your best judgment. Yeah. You know? Always go with your gut feeling. Exactly. And there you go. So with you being a marketing director and something that I bring up, I feel like I br- brought it up within like the last five episodes of this, is this whole influencer marketing. Mm-hmm. So to give you my perspective of it, I don't necessarily feel like 
air quotes, influencers <laughs> are really driving the culture at all. I think that there's a, a, a huge difference between an influencer and a, like a cultural curator or a creator in mm -hmm. the culture. Uh, how difficult is it for you to kind of differentiate the two? Because somebody can have 100,000 followers and just be, it's just riding the wave. You know, they're on the trend and they understand, they can understand what's going on and conform to it. Right. But there could also be somebody with 20,000 followers who really lives, eats, sleeps, and breathes this and will have a stronger impact on what it is that you're trying to do. Right. How difficult has it been for you to differentiate that with the, you know, social media and the way things are moving at the moment? Um, I think, you know, it, it's not hard to differentiate between the two. I think influencers really just kind of perpetuate what is popular or what, you know, the trends are. And then um, the people who are creating the culture obviously establish like, hey, this is what it is. And these influencers keep pushing it. So I, I don't think, I don't know if they're like doing it consciously. They're like, oh, I have to do this. Right. You know, push it out there. Um, but in terms of marketing, you know, I think influencers do help even if they're not creating the trends. But I think the, the creatives and, you know, the stylists and the trendsetters and the brands are the ones who are creating, like, hey, this is what we're on now. And then the influencers kind of just further that the trend. My take on that whole thing is, <coughs> uh, I think I might have said this before, but it just comes down to reach. And, you know, there's... Yeah, fuck Jerry or Fat Jew, th they're influencers on a, on a great big level. Mm -hmm. But not that we're going after them because of their style. Mm -hmm. You right. know what I'm saying? No one wants to be shirtless in jean shorts <laughs> with their belly hanging out. <laughs> but because Fat Jew does that, you know what I'm saying? Like that's not, yeah. that's not why we're going to them. And right. the reason why brands go to them is because of the reach. Right, and it's right. it could be a, a comedy page or a fit tee or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Like it, whatever you're going for, it's just because you're going to be able to reach that many people. It doesn't mean that you're going to be able to sell all That's this like shit because, sales, yeah, yeah, it's just about, it's another way to get traffic. It's a commercial and you're right, picking right. a network that's popular. Right. You know? I think a lot of times it seems like, and please correct me if I'm wrong, it seems like a lot of higher ups within these brands, whether you're selling a product or, you know, you're promoting your content or whatever it is, mm -hmm. I think that it falls under the umbrella of not necessarily understanding that just because these influencers have this amount of followers and this reach, they don't understand the fact that that's not going to translate into dollars or units sold. Yeah. And I think it's hard for a lot of those people to really get a grasp on the fact that just because they have those followers does not mean that there's going to be organic engagement with your product. Mm -hmm. And I feel like someone like you, like I can only imagine that when you walk into a room, say you're doing, um, you know, you're trying to get a celebrity in your you know, your um, uh, unpopular demand in mm -hmm. the products or whatever. I can only imagine that they're like salivating because they know you understand you're of the culture and you have some type of finger on the pulse of what's going on mm -hmm. because they don't. Mm -hmm. And I feel like whenever you can come into a room and say, hey, just because this, you know, your artist has so many followers or whatever doesn't mean that their fans are going to like the fact that they're wearing popular right. demand. And I think that there's always that weird kind of back and forth and I, I want to get your take on that, too. Yeah. The back and forth of, like, just because this person is popping right now doesn't mean that we're going to sell units on, yeah. the, you know, what we're doing. Yeah, I mean, I think we definitely get hit up all the time for, you know, for product feeding and mm -hmm. things like that. And we really have to be mindful of, you know, what's really, what really helps us in terms of, you know, moving product or kind of adding to the brand story. So, you know, sometimes I would pick, someone, I don't want to name any names, but... Uh, please really do. Please really do. Really <laughs> established, you know, rappers that have been in the game for a really long time mm -hmm. versus, like, an up upcoming um, artist that is, you know, creating some buzz on SoundCloud or something. You know, I might choose the one that's upcoming, even though they have a lot less followers and a lot, yep. they're not as established um, because they're making moves in the culture, like, on their own. You know, right. and they have, and they have an organic fans, exactly. and they're like yeah. fresh. Fans. It's all about relationship building, right? Yeah. Yeah. Grow with Definitely. people. Definitely, yeah. yeah. And then we, we always like to support people that we believe in, we believe are talented, and a lot of them end up blowing up, and they're doing 
incredible things now. Um, and you know, sometimes they don't all blow up, or they maybe change career paths. They maybe go into real estate or something. Like <laughs> this is why I ain't got no <laughs> box yet. <laughs> 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 she was like, you know, we try and go with people that are talented. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> you want to wait till we're on uh-huh. camera? Uh-huh. Yes. Yeah. Let me have my glasses back. back. <laughs> I'm done. I'm leaving. Here, let's trade. <laughs> yeah, no, let's leave. <laughs> no, let's trade. We're cutting again. Let's trade again. Uh, the drug lord has gone away. No, no, you got nothing. You're good to go. You got nothing. <laughs> you got no lines. Yeah, you chill. Lines. Do I have lines on <laughs> my face? Yeah, he's lying, you do. You liar! Lines! <laughs> hey, it's okay. The camera comes over here from that far away. You're chilling. <laughs> you oh, man. All right, so let's get a little bit, because this is going to be interesting to get a lady's, multiple ladies' perspective on some of the topics. <laughs> this week hasn't really been too like popping as far as like controversial content or anything like that. Last week, I wish I was here last week because we talked about that Bella Hadid. Oh my com- goodness! <laughs> oh, <laughs> we talked about, about that too. I really wish I was here to <laughs> talk about that because that falls right in line. But um, they the first get it. <laughs> they get it. They get it. <laughs> he could like get it. <laughs> you know what's so funny? On the way here, in my mi- I had like a fleeting thought in my mind, and I was like, "What if we like get nervous and start talking like that?" But we're, thankfully, we're not. Yeah, nervous. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we won't talk like that. Yeah. But it was like I was like, "Damn." Yo, Just that was mad fault. awkward. It was awkward as fuck. Cause you know she don't like you. Nobody throws out that many homeboys, homeboys. and that dope yeah. in that like my, time my span. My favorite tweet like, was someone was like, "Well, she sounds like an undercover." Oh yeah. Undercover yeah. cop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was, For real. That was because you could just, you could tell it was just so uncomfortable and so unnatural for yeah. her to like, like be yeah. in that space. On the I, like, cool. I think it made a lot of people cringe, but it made for excellent memes. Yeah, it did. Yeah, it's a good week. And it was a good week. <laughs> on my Instagram, when I scroll down, everyone, every girl's caption is like, homeboy is going to like get yeah, it. it. Like, <laughs> homeboy yeah. comes through and needs, it's quiet. <laughs> oh, oh my God. God, it was so bad. It was so bad. But he comes through with these hideous Air Max 95s. <laughs> <laughs> he can get it. He can get it. <laughs> How do you guys feel about those? Those Air Max 95s that like yeah. she mentioned? Like, why, did she, why are it those? It was just, yeah. yeah. She, she was just shooting at the target. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. She was just shooting at the target she, trying she to hold something. She didn't even vote. She was like, they come in these? <laughs> just like pointed at the ball. She's like, these all white yeah. chucks, though? <laughs> she can, like, get it. Her knees are like some Jordans. The whole, like, like, all of Southern California just. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah. Right? It's like, come on. You grew up riding horses. You wasn't wearing no Air Force Ones when you was on them horsebacks. Like, let's get real. <laughs> Keep it funky. Um, <laughs> I'm glad you actually wore those tonight, though, because one of the topics that I saw this week was that the black cause Jordan 4s are going to be releasing in 2018. Um, hmm. 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 I feel like a little birdie kind of told us a little bit of something. Well, well yeah. definitely my source yeah, fair, fair, has fair, told fair. me fair. not 2018. Not. And that November Wait, say that against <laughs> everyone who hears that. Not 2018. Yeah. Are you so gonna at your source? I am definitely not gonna at my source oh. at all. Sources will not uh, be named. S- sources will ra- remain anonymous. <laughs> I've been told November, not just November, but November twenty second. And if that happens, I expect everyone to call me, be like, "Yo, you were right, November twenty second. Hey, but okay, it could be, it could be somewhere in November. If but it's I am correct, told November. No, if it I'm, is I'm correct. Text you heard it good? here. That's all I'm texting. We good. <laughs> we good. Yeah. That's, That's all I'm texting good. you. On that I'll take that. That. If this is correct, November twenty second, you heard it here on the kickback first. Remember that. But I could be fucking wrong. You know. But <laughs> <laughs> wow, come on. But. I miss you. This is why I took the glasses off. I was like, I started, that is like, a I got a little subconscious like halfway through that. Because right, like, there's fuck, more these of not a feel heavy right? tint on yeah, those. Yeah. You can yeah. see yeah. the eyes starting around like, I don't know. <laughs> Let me just say. Allegedly. Okay. Allegedly. Allegedly. Sometime in November. That way there's no, there's nothing that can be held accountable here. No, we are holding you accountable for this. All right. Hey. This is somebody, make sure that. Play those numbers. No, play. <laughs> All on right. Record. Allegedly, we heard November 22nd, but the internet is buzzing about spring, summer 2018. Uh, it's unclear which pair will retail, whether it will look like the friends and family pair, um, or there was another pair that popped up online a little bit earlier before the gray pair actually released. Um, but what? What pair? The ones that had the X on the underneath. The so outsole. these have the X on the outsole. Right. The black ones. Do. Okay. 
So, uh, but the friends and family pair did not. They were just like those. Right. Yeah. So we don't know exactly. Go. Yeah, and they have the that white on the heel hard. tag as well. Mm -hmm. So we don't know if this is the one that's actually going to release. This is all speculation. But wait, wait what's on the heel tag? Uh, it's got the white X's in the oh, white shit. hair. It's not black like the friends. Yeah, and it's not tonal. Ew. It's yeah. contract. Uh, but it has been said that the College Jordan Fours will be releasing in summer 2018. Uh, do you think this will be the same type of release as the gray pair? I do. You do? You don't think it, they're going to do anything different for... I mean, I don't think that they're going to shut down the Brooklyn Museum and have a big thing with cause there. That was dope right. when uh, they projected the yeah. X's on yeah. the yeah. front. Yeah. Yeah. But I do think as far as like the way that it will be distributed globally will be probably the same mm -hmm. method. Uh, you don't think they're going to do... See, my if I had to guess, I would assume that they would probably release more of these to make that one so much more limited special because they did do that thing at the museum and they really they had calls out there and he was there with the people and I feel like that makes that one more special whereas the black one could be more of and as much speculation as there's been on these I feel like that could make that one just more of like a I'd be down for that too GR um, I think so yeah I feel like the second release is always like a little more accessible exactly mm -hmm. because they wanted to like put the first one out and then get the hype and build the mm -hmm. hype yeah. Yeah. yeah so I it's mean I, I've heard the fucked up thing was that so at the Brooklyn Museum, not that I was there, but I watched some of that little Q&A session, mm -hmm. and they asked, somebody asked Cause if there were gonna be more colorways, and he was like explicitly said, like, no, no this yeah. is it, whatever, which is I'm sure contractually bound to say that, and right. that's part of the whole mm -hmm. thing, to build it, if he said yeah, then maybe people right. would chill and wait and mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. be so hyped on it. Um, now, I have also heard that there is a green pair, and that is actually the friends and family. Oh. I don't know if that's true. And then I've also heard about a white and a blue pair. Jesus mm -hmm. Christ. So, I don't Wait, know. Wait, a white and a blue? Like not in not the one. No, like, like a white pair and a blue pair. All tonal, right? All tonal. Okay. But I don't that know. That would be nutty to see them do that many colors. That many? Yeah. One, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. One yeah. specific collaboration and silhouette. I, I do you guys feel I like that le like kind of waters it down? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah no sure. question. 100%. Because it, it goes back into the whole thing. And this has been a topic of discussion. We're still going to sell every like pair. Right. Absolutely. They're going to sell every pair, but then it just waters down everything. Yeah. Like yeah. I feel like that's something that Jordan Brand has been doing a lot of lately is just putting all this shit out here for the consumers and just like, it doesn't really hold value anymore. It doesn't make things as special as they once were, yeah. especially with the fact that you can't, like, you can't walk into a brick and mortar store, build a relationship with the store owner, really have this rapport. And they understand that you genuinely care and love for this product and these shoes and you have a connection to it because now it's just like whoever can pay for the best bot or get online and, right. and mm -hmm. type in yeah. their information the quickest mm -hmm. the, the kind of resale culture has kind of just not i won't even say ruined but it's definitely changed you know streetwear and whole culture because half the people standing in line are not even buying it because they want to buy they it. Don't give They're buying it to mm -hmm. sell for mm -hmm. Way more than half. Yeah. yeah. Way more than There's half. There's so much disconnect now where people just don't care. All they want to know is how much can they flip it for. Right. Yeah. And they will put in the time and the effort to get that product just so that they can make quadruple of what it was that they paid for it. Mm -hmm. And I think something like this where, you know, people are diehard cause fans, not so much Jordan fans anymore because, like I said, it's oversaturated. But there are people that genuinely want to have these, even if it's just as a collector's item because they love the artist so much, mm -hmm. that probably will never get their hands on them because of the fact that there are so many people out there that are just looking for a quick flip. Man, sh shout out to John Reaper, who's like a big like, cause collector. He, I believe he flew to Shanghai oh, to go be first that. in yeah. line. Wow, to get crazy. the cause like because he because the time that's difference was uh, it, it was they some were shit like that, that there, and there was yeah. a, like a basically they were doing a release at a museum same way that you know the release mm -hmm. cause you know uh, companions and things at museums um, they were doing a release at a museum in Shanghai I believe it was and wow. uh, he flew all the way out there with his with his squad and they got the first squad, in line right? like, yeah with his boys <laughs> yeah like that's dedication though but that and and no one's reselling anything. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that's dedication because they are really of this shit and mm -hmm. want it. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. I think it's dope that you have them and you're wearing them because a lot that's of people buy it, them and they important. just like yeah. if they don't sell it, they like keep it in the box mm -hmm. for yeah. forever. And I'm like, why did you buy it? I feel like if it's something that's wearable, you should wear it. 
It took John a minute to break those down. It did. It took me a There were a couple of times where he's like, yeah, I was going to wear them, and then I didn't. Yeah, this is the the (laughs) second run only. But But you know, though, that's still an on occasion kind of shoe. Yeah, it's not not an everyday shoe either. No, No, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I I wouldn't wear it every day either. But I feel like it's cool that you at least take it out to wear once in a while, and it's not just sitting in the box. Well, thank you. That's important, too. Like, even if you do put them back in a box, like, say you got a glass case or whatever for when they're on display when you're not wearing them. It is very important to put that you actually put them on feet. You go out and you can break necks with them too, because people be like, "Oh fuck, you're wearing those!" Like, yeah, motherfucker, I wear my shoes. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's, that, that, that's a thing. Like, people aren't people are so caught up in the, like the hype of everything and, and wanting to have it. It's like Pokemon. Like, you gotta have them all. Yeah, mm-hmm. just but to just have like <laughs> just to have them. Like, like, what's the point in that then? Yeah, like, at the end of the day, they're shoes. Like, yeah. 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 Like they are, so they are for around. a purpose. Right. You're supposed yeah. to put them on your feet. You're supposed to walk around, and the people take you know. If people acknowledge that, cool, but it's not just for the gram, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's how else are you supposed to enjoy it? Like right. there's Social that there's that that in, that, sure. that chase moment and that all that excitement that goes into like trying to get the shoe and all that, if that's how you get it. Mm-hmm. And right. uh, Or you sit at home and whip a lot. Yeah. Right. You pay so a couple extra dollars and right. so there's like that there's that moment mm-hmm. and then there's the actual like, I got it. And yeah. you're like you're amped. Mm-hmm. And then it kinda goes in the closet and it just that feeling it's just washes neck. away. Yeah. And then, but then when you pull it out again and you wear it, yeah, if you, you get that whole feeling back. <laughs> like, ah. yeah. If you're you know? about it, then you get that excitement all back again. Yeah. Like I bought a ton of shit lately that I'm just like, oh, that's sitting. Yeah. Like I'm gonna break that out next summer or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's gonna be I awesome. think that's important too. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, because that if you know you're gonna wear it, that's all fine and fine and dandy. Because I think a lot of times people want to be first, right. and I think that's mm-hmm. part of social media too. Is like. You want to be able to flex on the gram and say you had them first, yeah. and you're just wearing them on carpet or hardwood. You're not actually going to wear them out into the real world. Right. You just want to show off and get people to acknowledge you. Mm-hmm. Whereas something like that, it's like, you know what, I'm going to let these sit on ice for a little bit so people forget about them, or the hype dies down, and then pull them out. Because okay. you want to be different, or you know, you want to have that, you want to have your own moment, but for a different reason. Mm-hmm. Dude, so just to jump off of that, and you're the perfect person to be here for this, that... <coughs> The whole being first thing. So do you think that that concept is what drives the marketing strategy for Nike, or no, okay, so for Nike Mm -hmm. and Jordan, to pepper out the release for the Off-White collection by doing this early, super exclusive, really hard to get, only in a couple cities, and then now in November, they're gonna like, they'll let it fly. You know, it won't be Mm -hmm. like every other, you know, shoe, but it's still going to be uh, more accessible. More accessible. It's going to go yeah. for a global release. Like, why do that? Why just let a couple cities have it for like four months? Now you know all the people that got them like had to rock them before mm-hmm. they go global because then you're just like who you know Joe Schmo. Right. But people went bonkers paying crazy resale value and all this shit just to be able to get it and be that first, like you said. Yeah. So do you think that the brands take advantage of something like that? By no, for sure, because. The people who can be the first ones to get it in those select few cities, like your friend who flew out to Shanghai, not everyone can do that. Those are like the tastemakers, the kids who are like, Mm -hmm. wow, that's gold. I want to do that one day. But for now, I'll just wait until it releases somewhere closer to me. Mm -hmm. So I think it creates the the desire. If you just kind of open the floodgates, then everyone's going to be like, oh, yeah. Then it doesn't feel as special. Yeah, Mm -hmm. exactly. So, you know, it definitely is all, all of that is marketing. Absolutely. I if think it were for if it wasn't, you would just wear it. You can wear whatever. You can wear it twice. And it wouldn't hold value anymore. And I think that people, and I know you probably can't speak on this from an insider perspective, but I think that a lot of people in these marketing departments at these big brands, like they're leaking information out on purpose to build up this hype yeah. and build an awareness and really have people like kind of paying attention to what's going on. And then they do a limited release. And it's like, fuck, I didn't get those. And then a week or a month later, there's a worldwide release. You go, oh shit! I remember I couldn't get those, but now I ha- at least I have the the chance to right. to have them now. So it's like levels to the hype almost. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah but when you think about the Air Max ones that just re dropped, the from blue earlier blue. in March, uh-huh. like those were sitting around, mm-hmm. which is like the Afro Kicks was all over that shit. It's like, oh, hype's done, huh? <laughs> is it just sitting around now? You guys don't want them anymore? Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to get on Air Max Day. Because when like the first ones yeah. came out, he couldn't get them. Uh-huh. Yeah, and I was just happy as hell. Like, I, I hope they end up in Outland. I'll, I'll buy another four pairs. I don't give a shit. Like, <laughs> another four pairs. <laughs> yeah, let's go. God damn. Um, 
<laughs> you think Carl's learned his lesson from the mistakes of the last drop with his site getting hacked and the leaks and sizes, and that goes into what I just said. Like maybe that was all part of this whole thing of like, you know, he. I think it was like somebody hacked into his site. They showed like the number of sizes and each uh, amount for each size and all that. I didn't that. see that. And he, yeah. So that that happened before the release, like on Nike or any of that. Uh, somebody hacked his site and put in a, put out a screenshot of all the sizes that he had on the site and how many quantities were for each size. And eventually he just said, you know what, fuck it, I'm not releasing anything on my site. Uh, with the black ones, do you think he'll do the site release, not try and do anything? Do you think it'll just be that like Nike or Jordan brands? Like I hope it's the exact same like way it was last time. I hope it is the exact same yeah. way. I just so like brick and mortar stores. Just so I can mess with a pair. <laughs> that's how I feel like the original pair should have been. I would have been all over those. The black? Around. Yeah. Oh, of course. That's just money. money. Yeah. Yeah. All black with your, your white knees hanging out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I need all black knees. with your white knees. Over on the ladies' couch. Over on the ladies' couch. Is this something for you ladies? Is this something in your wheelhouse? Like, are you on the hype train? Do you care? Yeah. Because you're wearing fours right now, so too. I like four. My Do they make your size? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think so. Cause I try, I, and I've also I've never seen a girl with four sizes. That's like true. Yeah. Now that you mentioned yeah. that, I don't think that's no, not I haven't. About it. I, I, I haven't. was like, oh, my I've God, not seen a small right? pair. Yeah, it's yeah. like the light bulb just popped on top yep. of all of our heads. Yeah. Like, hmm. But <laughs> I think that's like one of one of my pet peeves is, you know, shoe brands not releasing stuff in one size. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or like us having to get the youth sizes. Okay, the quality since not you're a four fan. I think Mm -hmm. Are you you're all excited about the fact that it looks like a four now, right? I yeah. mentioned that. Yeah, I mentioned that before when I sat down. I was like, stupid and like straight. At least yeah, you yeah. got yeah. the hump on the GS mm -hmm. sizes. Yeah, now. yeah. I feel I like that happened for the Royals the first time around, and yeah, now they're yeah, yeah. the royalty. Royalty, yeah. Royalties, yeah. yeah. The gold Royals. accents. The fuck? Uh, <laughs> and now <laughs> they're now talking how they do it. It's fucking awesome, right? Yeah, it's dope that they actually like the four specifically. They make them look like the the adult sizes now, because yeah, before, yeah, yeah, yeah. on the GS4, it was just like on the inside where there was no hump on the outside, it was just straight mm -hmm. across, like, you could tell it was a grade school size, and it, it, it didn't look like the materials were the same quality, it just, it didn't really, yeah, it just didn't look like it was the yeah. same thing. Well, because it sucks, because we had to, like, go hunt for the smaller sizes, mm -hmm. and then you see, like, the guy ones, and you're like, that looks like it's a lot better. Yeah, it looks so like much it better. Made by the same <laughs> people. Discrimination. Yeah. yeah, I know. And I get it from their standpoint of like, yeah, these are kids' shoes. They're just gonna run and play in them. Yeah. And they're gonna fuck them up or grow out of them. But with the change in the culture now, where ladies are more into sneakers and wearing mm -hmm. sneakers with skirts or dresses or whatever, I think it's very important that they did something like that, where you can feel like you have the real thing yeah. instead of like a, a dumbed down version of exactly. it. Exactly. You, know? you don't want a watered down version. Yeah. Yeah, well, most like sneakerhead girls that I know, sorry. Yeah. Most sneakerhead yeah. girls that I know, like, they don't like, like, girly yeah. right. colors mm -hmm. that they want yeah. what the dudes yeah. have. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. That's Same thing. Like, yeah. we're making our size. Just yeah. gonna say, that's my other pet peeve is when these shoe brands make these weird, like, girly colors. I'm like, who the fuck wants to <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, don't like They'll do, like, the lime green with, like, the hot, like, vibrant pink. Ew, the pink and all that. Yo, but wait, I'm like the opposite of that. Exactly. <laughs> I would kill for those just straight down joints in my side. <laughs> Yo, oh, hey. straight so up. I feel like, Arctic that's orange. like what I was saying earlier. Like, I feel like the women get so much doper shit, but y'all want to rock, like, what the like the men's colorways are, you know, what they have yeah. available. More for men's them. pink sizes, Nike. and I'm just like, <laughs> no. Like I'll look at some, uh, like some Ultra Boost. There was like a, a purple and a teal colorway that only came out in women's. I'm oh, like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, <laughs> I, mean, I, <laughs> I don't know what <laughs> That's true. You see girls stuff all the time. You're like, dude, I would rock the shit. Straight out up, yeah. and I think that you know it's. It's different now, obviously. Like, shout out to Don C for doing what he did. Like, when he yeah. did his second release um, of the Don C twos, he was like, you know what? I feel like there's not enough releases, and there's so many collaborations and special edition shoes that come out that the women and the children don't get to partake in because they don't make them in their sizes. Mm -hmm. And I think that was very like commendable of him to be like, you know what? These are strictly for the ladies and strictly for the children, mm -hmm. because I know that they want to be a part of it and they they feel left out a lot of the time. But, but kids can wait, okay? They can grow up one day. <laughs> <laughs> the women, this is our time right Straight now. Up. Yeah, I got to buy shoes. <laughs> I got a job. I got money to pay for shoes. Like, let me buy the shoes. For real. Like, you just want to be included. Come yeah. on, Yeah, and it's so sad because girls are like, well, you know, I mean, like, look, looking online sometimes, and girls are like. 
Just run for a little bit, but just bubble up on the spot. I'm like, who wants to do that? Who wants to do that? Who wants to do that? Extra work. Like, exactly. just make it for me. You feel like an orthopedic like, thing. It's just like so many sides. I'm like, Because yeah. that's what all girls want is their feet to look bigger. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. Oh, man. Actually, you know what? I think it was, uh, I was at the Project Blitz Warehouse, mm -hmm. and they had, I think, they were like, I mean, there couldn't have been many at all, but they had a size seven, I believe, of the cars, mm -hmm. which was like stupid Super rare. rare, yeah. And they were like holding that like it was gold, because like yeah. that one, of course. Crazy. that size hair. Size seven? What is that in, in women's? That's, that's like five. No. That no, that's would be bigger. Way. It's like a nine? It's like that's an eight, eight or a half. half. No, oh, yeah, 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 you're right. Women's yeah. shoes are mm -hmm. larger than men. Yeah, I like think I have the opposite one. problem where you have. I'm on the opposite end of the spectrum where my shit is way too big. So it's hard for me to find shoes as well. I'm a 14 and you're, if I had to guess, you are a grade school five, five and a half? Five. <laughs> got them eyes. Got it, put it up <laughs> there, <them baby>. eyes. <laughs> <laughs> So I think it's sometimes for me. She's it's like, like gets her, gets her foot. Yeah. <laughs> now, now do her now. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, how about me? <laughs> in store is never like it usually stops at a thirteen. So it's like if I can get online and find them, there's usually one or two pairs, mm -hmm. and then it's just like it's a wrap. Right. So I feel your pain as far as you know stuff not being catered to us specifically and having to jump through hoops to yeah. try and get that shit. Have, like staying up till like three a.m. on the internet looking for. <laughs> Looking for sizes or then having to get it from like a reseller because mm -hmm. you couldn't get it through me. Yeah, some little squirt who went and bought the 14. Some little squirt. <laughs> <laughs> hey, for real. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's always been people that like, and I feel the same way when I step into an airplane and I see a motherfucker that's like five foot three sitting in the exit row and I'm like, you little motherfucker. Like, I know good and well, you're you just sitting there swinging their legs and shit. I'm like, that's I would do. Mm. Like, have you never freaked out and been like, get up? Like, just get up. No, I'm talking I'm, about look it. Look at me. I'm already a threat. Oh, that's true. Yeah. You have privilege. I don't yeah. have you that You got one foot out the door yeah. already. Right. Yeah, they already <laughs> expect me to be hostile. So I just walk to the back of the bus. Yeah. <laughs> no. They already phoned ahead about you. <laughs> I saw you coming in before you boarded. Uh -huh. Yeah, the one with the tattoos. You know, there's a... Um, <laughs> Calling all security, calling all security. We have a black male on board. Please keep an eye on him. I don't know if he's going to steal anything. Watch the bag. He, he wants marshal on this He flight. wants leg room. He wants leg room. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Off the calls and Jordans and on to the brand that jumped over the jump, man. And I'm, I'm fucking hot about this one. Because when I saw these first come out, I was so like, yes, I was on board. I'm all about the Volt green colorways. Oh, oh my God! No. No. We talked about this today too. Should we leave now? Or oh, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Let's go. Adidas, <laughs> they are completely, oh. yes, oh completely God. fucks up the semi-frozen yellow 350s and put a motherfucking gum sole why on. Why is that? Okay, why is there a gum sole? Thank no you. one can explain that. And it's not even okay. It'd be different if it was a full gum sole around the midsole. But you know how Yeezys are. They got that one little fucking That's piece mean. in the back yeah. that yeah. sticks out like a sore thumb. Yeah. And they just ruined this whole shoe. Those colors just don't, <laughs> none of these colors work together. It doesn't work together. Brown and bold. You know, now, the green and the red work because that reminds me of the Kobe 6 Grinches. Sure, sure, sure. And I'm all, all, that worked. all about that. Even with the blue shit, like, yeah, it looks like somebody pissed on your zebras. But, but like, right. I can make <laughs> it work. Like a basketball shoe colorway. Right, exactly. Like, it reminds yeah. me, like, the yeah. time that it's coming out, the colorway, like, Kobe six Grinchmas all day, yeah. but <sighs> they fucked it up with the gum sole. And according to Yeezy Mafia, <laughs> the most vibrant pair of Yeezys to date, which was absolutely my favorite. I was all on board for these until I saw that gum sole. Uh, this is actually supposed to be the most limited release ever, which uh, before this was the Zebras until mm -hmm. they did the restock of the Zebras. So. I guess they're putting that title on this now. <laughs> um, That's fine. Right, but Moving it's still, exactly. Can we, get, can we get this picture off the screen? Can we put the McDonald's one up? <laughs> yeah. I feel like this takes me back to when I lived in Taiwan, and you know, like, I don't know if any of you guys have been to, like, different parts of Asia. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. What? And it's funny, because he's probably going to sell all of those 100%, no matter how hideous they are. No matter how McChicken this stains they are. It looks like a, like a night market a night bootleg. Ball. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like they, they completely, they, they bastardize it. Uh, it's not been, it hasn't been said exactly how many pairs will be released, 
Probably just those six. Oh, right? Yeah, he got them all. He, got, he had to catch them all. He got a fucking Pokeball in his life. He works at McDonald's. No, I'm playing. <laughs> uh, the way he's wearing that hat, it looks like he does. Previously, the ones that they had that were coming out. No, Where not in the car. More McDonald's. No, my man's driving a Prius. Uh, Ooh, with the, 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 Oh man, that everything shit? about this is carbon fiber. Our idea over here. <laughs> so if you look at a shoe and the first thought is McChicken, I don't know if that's the right shoe. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Because that's, that's what's happening here. I thought here. even McChicken wrappers were more classic colors. <laughs> it is. Shoe. It definitely is. Maybe huh? that's what his comment was. Like, look how much better this. This whole situation right. is confusing to me. <laughs> I don't know. What's happening here? It's like the white. Is the dress white and blue or uh, <laughs> <laughs> white and gold? <laughs> Oh, what the fuck man. am I looking at there? <laughs> so before we saw these, the, the pair that was circulating online had like Shout a glow sole. It had Shout glow. <laughs> Shout out to all the pairs. It had a glow heel tab and all that. This has been completely scrapped. And now the ones with the gum sole are supposed to release on November 18th. Yeah, it does. this oh. is the same, yeah. Oh. The Machik, this is the same McDonald's dude. He just, he moved from this the same is not a yeah, this car. This is on his way out. <laughs> 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 Um, <laughs> why? Why do you think this happened? This, oh, man. Did they glow in the dark? No, they got rid of all the glow in the dark components on the Terrible. shoe. You were looking for one thing to like about it. You're like, right. it yeah, dark? something. My man yeah. went through yeah. a whole like, 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 like Yeah. Kind of. <laughs> you can't see him. It Dude, looks like a light bulb. <laughs> My well, man did a whole shoe. Yeah. The stress so huge. Hey, chill, 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 chill. That's definitely seen through size. Size 14, I guess. No, it's not. It just looks like it. just looks like Unless that's a fucking triple size McChicken. Chill, 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 chill. Oh, that's you, that's you. Yeah, ain't no wrong with big. That's maybe no this way. is the reason why it's there for perspective. <laughs> perspective. There we go. Uh, why do you think they fucked this shoe up like that? Because obviously we all on the same page. Like these, these are not popping. I don't know. It's a. You just said you love them. Nigga, please. Oh my God. <laughs> no. I, I thought you I'm did kidding. without the gum. You love them, you but then the gum sole the gum ruined it. The no, yeah. I loved them when we first saw images months ago when they were right. talking about these and uh, it was like the tent blues or something they were supposed to release. Mm -hmm. and I was like, yes. Cause I love Volt shoes, especially I like this. Say, like, do you think they were like, hey, let's make a Volt type colorway? I think so. Like yeah, and I, I think that they they knew what they were doing. I don't know if this was something that like they had higher ups had a conversation. It was like, hey, it's too much like this or what? But they completely, in my pers my opinion, completely ruined the shoe with that gum sole. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, they're not making it linen though. I, you know, it, they still gonna sell out though. That's the whole thing. And that's that's to my question too, like. Even though this is hideous and it's still going to sell out, do you think that's a testament to, to Kanye and the, the Yeezy yes, line? Yes. Definitely. I think definitely. so. If Kanye wasn't associated with us, who the fuck would buy this? That's a great question because if these, if you look back into the past, before Kanye wore the Ultra Boost or the Energy Boost or anything like that, those shits mm -hmm. were just sit. sitting on mm -hmm. the rack. Nobody yeah. was like checking yeah. for them. But then as soon as Kanye came and wore them on stage at a powerhouse, and the whole Kanye effect took place at Adidas, mm -hmm. everybody was on the boost wave. Mm -hmm. And I feel like the Yeezy hype has died down a little bit, but I do still feel like people, just because of the fact that Kanye is associated with it, it's gonna end up being, you know. Because they know they can sell it for more money. Yeah. Basically, yeah. yeah. If you could, if, if there was like a law against selling it, mm -hmm. and no one was able to, and there weren't sites and places and stores and all these things, do you think people would really, really line up for it the same way? I doubt it. I don't think so. I don't think so, yeah. If they did it like Vape, where they come in and they, they size your foot. And you yeah, that's the only size. way you can get the shoe, is if you walk one in, pair only. they check your size of your foot, and they sell you the one pair. I'm yeah. all for it. And then you got, I'm, you know, I'm so down for all that. All for yeah, that. I'm so with that. I actually that. like yeah. that whole experience. I, last time I did that, it was like shoe carnival. Some shit. Oh, yeah. Somebody <laughs> would actually like did the whole like the oh look, look <laughs> and it's like, I was Dang, like oh shit yeah. yeah that's crazy <laughs> I'm definitely with that because then that eliminates obviously people buying multiple pairs and mm -hmm. buying if they are ten and a half and they're buying a size eight or a size thirteen yeah. or you're fourteen yeah. it's gonna make for a pretty 14. weak fucking McDonald's picture that's for sure <laughs> <laughs> it's me and my one shoe and my two chicken sandwich. <laughs> hey yeah. you fucks with the McChicken? No. <laughs> never ordered that in my life. What? No. Never. You ain't never been broke, huh? Okay, chicken. You always had money. No. <laughs> 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 and I was still not sure. Hey, I'm a dollar menu. Nair fucks with me. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> all right, so it's a general consensus. We all hate these fucking frozen yellow Yeezys, and Adidas, you pissed me off. So bad because I was checking for these. Can we so call hard. them the McChickens now? Or Fuck it, yeah, McChickens. Yeah, yeah. McChickens. The McChickens. The, the gum sole looks like the fucking yeah, chicken Yeah, the chicken patty. patty. Yeah. 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 He knew what he was doing. He killed it. <laughs> Shout out to you, guy. Hire that guy. Somebody <laughs> hire that somebody. guy. He's, He's an influencer. influencer. Guy. If He's an look, influencer. If you're looking for some work at Popular Man, hit up uh, Monica. Oh, <laughs> She's looking for emerging <laughs> talent. <laughs> All right, we're running out of time, but I want to get my last topic off. We're going to skip over one, but I just want to know. What is your favorite or your least favorite trend in the sneaker game right now? Mine, I'm gonna start off, is these fucking dad shoes. I hate every single thing about them. The Balenciaga Triple S's. I hate the fucking Rap Sim and Oswego's. I hate all you motherfuckers. No, I don't hate y'all. I hate, 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 hate. But I highly dislike all of you that are riding this fucking wave right now because that shit is not hitting right now. We had somebody on here last week who was running the Oswe goes, and I will say the black and gum colorway swayed me a little bit. But yeah, and with his outfit, it worked yeah, he was him. wearing them, yeah, yeah. and I think that's a lot of it too. Right? If you right. wear them well, mm -hmm. it works. But if you clean, you clean. If you, you clean, clean, you, you clean. clean. <laughs> but like, I feel like it's just such a, a troll thing right now. Like people with these monarchs, and like Eric Costin skated in the monarchs, and I know yeah. Eric personally. Like he's a funny guy, so he knew what he was doing. But like Concepts has a monarch collaboration coming uh -huh. out. And it's just like, are y'all trolling the world right now? Like, what is really going on with this whole dad shoe shit? Like, and from a lady's perspective, I just want to know, like, are y'all really with could that? Could he get it? Or like, like is it, it quiet? Or could the homeboy, like, homeboy like, like, get it? <laughs> what can they get? I cannot. <laughs> what can they get, right? <laughs> if uh, the dude those, is wearing uh, the monarchs. Not <laughs> past. I, I think, I think, I don't know if it's like a trolling thing or not, but like there's like this whole aesthetic thing going on and like kids just like to wear like really ugly Obnoxious or like shit. Oh, you're talking about like the norm looking. core? The norm yeah, core yeah, norm okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. But they'll never say like, I'm so norm core. Right, they won't call themselves. I'm norm core AF. Right? Yeah. <laughs> it's just like the whole like retro look, but I'm young, so it make, it's kind of funny, I think. I think it's cool. Some people can really pull it off. Yeah, if you, you can, can pull, pull it off, it off. Cool. I'm not mad yeah. at it. I yeah. actually like them. I it like totally them. comes down to styling. It's like, like, he can get it. <laughs> <laughs> so it ain't quiet for homeboy. Homeboy can, like, get it if he pull up in some quiet monarchs. Quiet can get it. Yeah. <laughs> homeboy pull up in some monarchs. <laughs> as long as it's right. Okay. Yeah. I feel that. Clean, you clean. If you clean, you if clean. If you clean, you clean. Exactly. That guy uh, was off. <laughs> does anybody else have anything they love or hate right now? Or uh, This is not anything trend worthy, but I'm very excited about 35th anniversary of Air, Air Force, Force One yeah. and how yeah. there are some cool things happening right these. now mm -hmm. and about to be happening. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, oh. November should be cool. So yeah, those Nike IDs are sick, the, the NBA ones. Oh yeah. Yeah, I had yeah, to order a pair of those them. green ones. I'm sure you did. Yeah, this, I'm not a Celtics fan, but I'm an Irishman. <laughs> through and through. You don't say. Yeah, so <laughs> I had to use those. The Tumble Love looks amazing. <laughs> You're a clunky shoe fan. Uh, yeah. What what has been something that's gotten your attention lately? The Chimera, Pippins. The ki oh yeah, the yeah, 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 the Kip ones. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Those aren't even going for that much. I think I might have to swipe it. Yeah, uh, those are even nice. Even if they yeah. were going for much, I'm sure you would. I mean, they're going for less than the Supreme up tempo. Oh really? Which is surprising to okay. me, honestly. Those weren't even Supreme, that bad. But oh, yeah, people yeah, are really like yeah. they love the up tempos right now. Oh, I'm like yeah, I love, yeah, I love yeah. big clunky trainers. Yeah, Nike yeah. killed them with those shine downs on us, but that's yeah. neither here nor there. Uh, and ladies? <laughs> you mean killed it like you, you like those? No, he's not happy. No, I, yeah, feel I don't like, like those they, at all. Yeah, I feel like they, they they've just gone overboard now. Exactly. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. They dropped the shark. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And let's end it with our beautiful ladies. What is something that you love or like, just hate right now? I think style-wise, I like how a lot of um, brands are they are catering towards women a little more with mm -hmm. like platforms and like interesting colorways. Um, I think like Kith and Puma and them, they've done a really good job yeah, with definitely including women. And when I was in New York, probably like a month ago, I went through the Kip store and I was like, oh, this is like, this is really cool. And there were tons yeah. of girls in there. There were guys too, but that was really dope. So yeah, I feel like just making, broadening the selection for women. Hell yeah. That's like a trend. Um, right now, I definitely, to piggyback on Monica, the platforms. I love platform anything as far as that goes. Um, there's nothing that I actually don't like at this moment. Like I was saying, as long as you're able to pull it off, if it looks good, it looks good. She's even cool with the monarchs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. She's 
<laughs> I don't even want someone to get it. <laughs> so it if depends. you can pull off the monarchs, you can like get, get it. it. Yeah. <laughs> even if you're a 60 year old man standing at the grill oh. with a kiss the cook bib, like oh that's God. all you. Oh. <laughs> well, just don't go to Walmart or any place like that. Oh my God. <laughs> with like grass stains on it and shit. Oh Lord. Ew. It'll be a plenty. Ew. <laughs> Ew. 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 Oh my we gosh. appreciate you ladies coming through and being our our first ladies in this discussion. It has been very insightful to have you here. Thank you uh, for having us. Yes. Absolutely. I'm going to make sure to text you guys and say, I'm going to share profiles with you. And say, hey, just for me. So, so you guys have a story. Please, Please do. do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, that was good. That was yes. Good. <laughs> yeah. I don't yeah, ever yeah. like you. That's cool. We are no, not. No, it's not by choice. We just haven't found the right, the right yeah. one. Yeah, yeah absolutely. The best friend. Uh, let the people know where they can find you on the internet. Social media, um, whatever you want to plug. I think all of my stuff is Thundercup, except for Twitter. It's Thundercup LA. If anyone that's watching works at Twitter, please help me out. I need the Thundercup handle. <laughs> Who has the Thundercup? <laughs> Some <laughs> asshole who's just not using it. Damn, they're just trying to get you for that. Uh, mm -hmm. That's going to ruin my life. <laughs> um, yeah, mine is Kiana Kashan. It's a little complicated, but it's right there. Okay, but for our listeners, they can't oh. see it. Uh, yes, it's K I O N A C H R E S E N. Yes. Yeah. She had a question. She's like, is that my name? Is it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I forget how to spell my name sometimes. <laughs> oh, man. As always, please follow us at Sneaker Inc. That's S N K R I N C. Once again, I am your host, Thesis, for John Colombo, for Dano, and our beautiful ladies, Monica and Kiana. We are signing off. Thank you again for joining us, and we will see you back here next week. Bye. A peace out. Keep on making them. <laughs>